just to finish off the the install of the um uh the this is the i showed you it was underneath the van and this is the the wiring loom for the diff locks which has all been wired in now but there's one other there's one other piece as well which is the um that also carries the the sender the sender signal from the fuel tank as well but obviously the fuel tank has moved and I've, I've deleted the the plug that's underneath the underneath the van for the old fuel tank now this is the new new one um you can see now what i've done here and i've, I've been able to do because i'm using a a um a donor vehicle um i've been able to go to the fuse box on that donor vehicle and and find the plug the corresponding plug for that um which is which is this and and identify where it goes into the fuse box as well um and take it out in one piece what i've done now is i've i've found the same the same wire for the um for the two wheel drive on my fuse box which is you can see it's the same color and there's the plug it is now and i've managed to extract it basically i just pulled it out it's, it's bent the tabs back but it doesn't matter because it's dead now anyway i'm not going to be using it. i'll just cut it off um so yeah all i need to do now is to install this into there into that plug this end and um unplug that in there and it should all work after that let me just get that done now so that's now done I've replugged in the uh, the multi plug at the back of the um, back of the fuel box, and this is now connected up to that, um, and that should be now sending my, um, my the signal fuel signal or fuel level signal from the um, from the fuel box up through the new part of the from the fuel box from the fuel tank um, up through the new newly installed loom and and into the fuse box and on onto the gauge. Uh, and there you can see that the, uh, it's getting a small signal there from the, because there's not a lot of fuel in the tank at the moment, but I'm getting a signal all, nonetheless, so that's, um, that's all sorted. One more job done. So the front suspension is now going in. I'm um, just putting it all in very, uh, just, I'm just putting it all in now that the, uh, the front, I put the front drive shaft in here, so I've started putting the um, upright in. It's loose at the moment. What I'll do is I'll go around and hand tight uh, everything make sure everything's hand tight on both sides as I go along and put them and finish each side then I'll uh, I'll set aside some time to go around and talk everything up nut by nut bolt by bolt um, and do both sides together and make sure everything's up to the uh, proper torque values uh, I've still got to put on the um, the anti-roll bar or sway bar whatever you, you, you prefer to call it um, one point that's worth mentioning here that you need to drill the holes for these these supports that, that um, come down, which are different from the two-wheel drive ones, obviously. Um, and uh, you need to drill them, ideally drill them holes before you mount the subframe. Do it when you're doing the holes for the, for the actual subframe itself. Uh, there's two holes that you need to drill. Um, that one there is the original one for the two-wheel drive, which is now you don't need it anymore. There's one here, and there's another one here for, for this to be bolted up. Um, and they are, well, it's best to look here on the, um, on the, on the uh, chassis of the the old donor vehicle, and you can see just on here where this this bolted up up to there, um, and from there to the end of that chassis roll is 66 centimeters. Um, so yeah, that's, a, that's that's the measuring point that you need to get the get the holes right. Just um, 66 centimeters from from there to there, uh, and mark your holes and drill, and they'll be in the right place. So that's the all of the front suspension now on um, drive shafts, springs, well everything basically apart from the steering rack. Uh, it's nearly there. I'll be getting to, near to the end of this this part of the project now. Um, yeah, that all went on quite quite easily, really. Uh, the, I suppose the um, I, it was a bit bit tough getting the anti roll bar links on. That's a bit of a bit of a wrestle to get them on, but uh, no problems. Uh, I suppose there was one issue. There's always a there's always a bump in a row to slow slow progress down, or it seems to be anyway with this project. Uh, with with this one, the um, the the bolt for the the lower shock absorber eye, that where that goes through into the cast lower lower arm there, the um, the thread was uh, the thread was stripped on that. I, if I remember back, actually, when I stripped the vehicle down, the down the vehicle down, uh, that I remember there was a longer bolt in there with a. With a with a nut on the end on the other side of that where it comes out and they'd actually cut um, part of the uh, the lower one of these um, lower one of these bushings uh, 
out out of the way so that the um the nut would fit so basically what i had to do with that slowed me down for about a week i had to um order up a helicoil and i helicoiled that yesterday and and talked it up to i think it's 150 newton meters or something like that along those it's it's it's, it's, it's ft anyway so um so yeah anyway that's all done now so all i really need to do now is is the um is get the the, the rack built up and 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 get that fitted here's the rack i've um I've started fitting the um, started fitting the uh, the arms to it, um, and uh, it's, I'll just give it a quick coat of paint. I tested it off the vehicle. Uh, I connected it up to the, um, the 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 hydraulic lines with the engine running, and there was no leaks, uh, none at all, really. So um, I'm hoping that that's a, that's a good rack, and that, and and it all it'll all work okay. I suppose the only one really only really one way to find out is get it on the car. And, drop it on its wheels and see what happens but um yeah so what i've got to do now is I've got, i'm going to run some um some some because the old the old uh the old pipes for that were in a in a bad way so what i've done is i've uh, i'm going to use some uh, again some air quick fittings that are going to go into here and they'll connect up to the um up to the pipes or the hoses the pressure hose and the, and the drain hose that take it take it back to the back to the um the pump i'll do them this week as well, I've just got to, again. I've got to hold up a few little bits and pieces. That's, that's really all that's holding me up now with this project is is is, is ordering a few a few bits and pieces as I go along. Stuff that I'd never stockpiled prior to the prior to the starting the project. Um, so that's that, and then it will be the gear linkage, which again I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna try and renew as, as many bits and pieces on that as I can. Uh, and then it's more or less done, hopefully. Um, oh, I've still got to do to connect the clutch up as well. The, um, the the clutch line because that's that's got to be shortened because the synchro one is slightly shorter with a longer flexible hose for some reason I don't know why I'll, I'll show you that in more detail when I um, when I get back under the car or under the van but for now anyway for now that's where I am at the moment um, I'll come back when I've made some more progress with this steering rack uh, and hopefully got it in I forgot to mention what I was um, what I'm planning to do with the front brakes. Uh, for the moment, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using the the the, uh, the Synchro 16 front calipers with a uh, probably probably with a, a black diamond disc upgrade and, and pad upgrade as well until I actually do decide what where I'm going to go with with the uh, with with the front brakes and and any mods that I'm going to do to them. Um, you can see I've got um, it's a Porsche Big Red. Um, it's a Brembo caliper. It's got off of a Porsche 911, which actually comes off of one of my other other cars that's off the road at the moment. The same one that I got the Audi S6 calipers, the rear calipers off of. So um, it's an option I could use them. Uh, basically, I just I just took them off and 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 um, and used them to fit up and and come up with some ideas. But I don't, you know, there's 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 lots of different options out on the internet. Um, where people sell sell kits, brackets, and 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 whatnot, just to to do a, a um to to give you an upgrade. There's some other ones that use uh Audi Audi discs and, and and calipers as well. So yeah, I'm kind of undecided at the moment. So for the moment, I'm going to stick with these. Uh, like I say, with a with a disc and pad upgrade, probably the black diamond ones, because they're ready readily available. And I'll decide at some point in the near future where I'm going to go with the with the uh, with the with the front brakes and and, and any um, significant upgrades, there will be an upgrade, but I, I'm not sure just yet what it's going to be. Well, that's the um, power steering rack all built up now. Uh, the arms and the bellows and everything are on there. Um, power flex bushings off of the old one uh, that, are, that are still in good nick, so I've used them on on the, on the new one or on the right hand drive one. So yeah, it's all ready to go in now. Um, one of the things I'm going to have to do is because I'm making up new lines. Um, got uh, some air equipment fittings, and I'm just sorting out out of some old um, some old pipes that I'd lying around, um, which is lucky really. So I'm buying some new stuff um, so that I can I can connect them up. Um, that's it really. Only one point I suppose worth knowing is uh, that's the intake or the the um, the inlet. Uh, that's a slightly smaller. That's the higher pressure one. Uh, that's a slightly smaller diameter. That's uh, M14 thread, and and the outlet is an M16 thread. That's just a cap on there at the moment because it's full of um, full of fluid and it's leaking out if I don't cap that off at the moment. So yeah, that's the only only points really I suppose it might be worth mentioning about the um, the power steering and that's it really. Stick it on now. The the power steering hoses on the um, on the original donor vehicle were 
were kind of like haphazardly rooted and flopping about all over the place. So I've kind of had to um, uh, decide where I'm going to put these. Uh, what I've done is, um, oh, I don't know if I can show you. Uh, one is one, one came with a clip attached to it, so that's bolted up to the um, to the to the chassis, up to the cross member that goes across the chassis. Um, that's the uh, that's the pressure line, that's the return line. They're the original hoses that I've used. Um, okay, so that goes along there. What I did, um, I didn't. They wouldn't fit up in that through that recess too much of them. Where that you know the usual bit where the um, where the cables run up through there. So. I cut two holes um, and fill, fitted them with grommets so they can run through there, which they do. And then they, again, they're just cable tied to the, um, to the existing um, harness run, which takes um, all the electrical, the vacuum, whatever else stuff, uh, and, and up, to the, um, up to the rack. The, um, the pressure line's a little bit longer, that, so that one is attached to uh, a brazed on fitting that I, I did that some time ago. Um, so, so it would take the um, take an AN fitting, AN6 in this case, this is a pressure line and it goes through to the to the uh, the input for the rack there. The return is a dash eight because it's slightly wider in bore and that joins up to that, that original hose with a, a push fit fitting. I don't know if you can get, get any idea of it. I should have really taken a some pictures and some film of it before I stuck it in there, but um, but uh, I love those push fit fittings. You get the right size and um, they perform a lovely, a lovely transition from normal hose to um, to an AN fitting, um, and and they're uh, tough as old boots and, and take a lot of pressure. I mean, there's hardly any pressure on this because it's a return line anyway. So yeah, that's it for the moment. Um, uh, a couple of things I've got to do. I'm waiting. I'm, I'm waiting for some new bolts for the. Um, I wasn't happy with these 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 bolts. Either the ones that came off my uh, my, my two wheel drive rack, or the ones that came, they were all a bit bit bit, bit manky, a bit rusty. So uh, I'm just waiting for them to turn up in the post, really, uh, and then I'll finish bolting the the, the rack up. And um, but yeah, so I've just run the, I've just run the engine. There's no leaks yet. So um, so yeah, and I've got to obviously I've got to tighten these up as well. I've got some replacement nuts coming for these as well. So um, that's another job done. Just one more thing to mention for the um, as far as the conversion goes and the steering, the um, the steering shaft arm, whatever it's called. Uh, it's not an arm, a shaft more than anything else. And it goes from the from the, the steering box to the rack. Um, is is a synchro specific part as well uh, on a two wheel drive. It didn't have a UJ. I don't think it had a, one of them, one of those flexible couplings, those um, fiber things. Um, and the the biggest difference is the um, is that this is a lot shorter as well than the two wheel drive version. So obviously, if you're doing a conversion, you need to make sure that you get that part as well.